Right, so here we are at our new destination. It's the Dale side, and uh, what a place it is too. Things on the wall telling you how good this place is, and I've had a walk around. It's amazing. But what's here? We're going to find out. The man who knows, of course, is the king of all these surveys, Michael. Tell me a little bit about this place. How long have you been here? Because you've been you've been in the business for a while. I have been here thirty years. Coming right. up, uh, building was built in eighteen fifty by right. a local stone quarry right uh, as a community house uh, licensed back end of the 1800s de licensed then licensed again uh, steeped in history local history mm. and how the pub got its name no and uh, the pub prior to that was of course the nicky knack yes. or the nicky knack bridge hotel at one time right. so the, the Nicky Knack story, a lot of people know, and of course, Alan Armstrong made a quite famous little, it was only a five minute film, but it was it didn't half go around the place. Um, and yet that story is slightly different. There's a, there's a, a more updated version of it that, that seems to carry a bit of weight. What exactly is that then? The story was some guys were drinking in a pub, uh, in a house in Tudor, just up the road, the next village up. Uh, they ran short of drink, so they sent a young laddie down here to get some for them. Uh, Unbeknown to him, one of his pals from that drinking session uh, left the property with a blanket, went into a paddock just up the road from here, and as his pal came down, he spooked him he, with his cover over his head. Well, he was uh, dressed as a ghost, essentially. Yeah, yeah, true. Yes, it was dusk. It was yeah, like yeah, early yeah. evening. So he, uh, he, he spooked him. So the young laddie ran down here, ran into the pub, into, uh, into the, the lounge on the left there, and collapsed and died of a heart attack. He wasn't very old. Right. Uh, the pals from the drinking session came down here, uh, knew that there was one of them in a paddock somewhere trying to spook him, found the, the sheets covered in blood in the paddock, no body. Uh, and they came, never found the body again? Never found the body. The body's still a cold case. Uh, so the police here yeah, still hold that as, a, as absolutely. open? Yes, yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So the... Uh, they came down to the pub, found out this young laddie had died of a heart attack through exhaustion. Right. And uh, then they were interviewed by the police, but uh, nothing became of it. The story about the Nicky Knack, uh, getting its name, was the laddie in those days, the wooden heel sole, their shoes. Right. And the heel came loose on his shoe, and it was making a clicky clack sound right. uh, on the terrain. Uh, so that's where they changed the name. It's, it's funny because... I, Doing my research uh, on this, I found that in Croxdale Colliery, if you spoke to a miner and asked them what the Nicky Knack was, the Nicky Knack was what they called the pulley system to get people up from the coal seam. Right. And they would say to people, uh, <laughs> get on the Nicky Knack, we're coming up. Right. And the guy would, and it was the noise that right. to the old fashioned right. cage right. to come up from the front. So that's what they called the Nicky Knack. Now, if this was called the Nicky Knack before that story happened, mm. that would make sense. Mm. And then all of a sudden, because of the, the loose heel and that story, because what I've found a lot of things that stick, especially when it comes to local history. It takes two or three kind of related things to make it sit comfortably so that it isn't just one story because every pub has a story, mm. but they're not all named after it. It has to be That's something right. more substantial. Yeah. Well, Durham County Council used to do a, a, a five-kilometre run round, round the area, yeah. and uh, th this was a watering point right. for the race. Great. And they said uh, Daleside Downs, formerly called the Nicky Knack, and they featured the story of the young lad in a lot of their county council brochures Great. for tourists. Yeah, because it's not just a story, it's an integral yeah. part of, right. of what this is. It's, it's the, the heartbeat of the bar. Yeah. Um, we're here, obviously, to see what's happening here, whether we get anything. Now, you've had a lot of ghost groups here. Forget them for the moment. Have you had anything that you can say that, definitely was at something strange. Have you had any incidents? I've experienced people stood beside me in toilet areas, the top end of the bar there. Feels as if somebody's just stood beside me. 
never seen anything. You see, you see things out the side of your eye, right? But yeah, uh, right, right, right. not enough knocks and bangs to 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 point in a positive direction. Right. But uh, yeah, I I do feel a little bit uh, well shaky at times. Well, there's a little bit, little bit of history here, which is great. <laughs> yeah. What's the most vivid thing that's happened to either any of your guests or any of the people here or any of these groups that have come down to say hi? Well, there is a story about the staircase in here and uh, myself, my wife and my eldest daughter have all come down the stairs from the second step up. Right. Uh, I was actually walking downstairs counting some money for a wedding reception. As I walked down the stairs, my legs went from underneath me, second step down, oh. and I had five pounds in my hand. The five pounds were fluttering down, <laughs> and the bride and groom walked through the door. They thought it was something we'd put on as a feature <laughs> for them. Uh, second time, my, my wife was carrying my eldest granddaughter downstairs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Second step down, she came tumbling down the stairs. F felt oh. as if something had gone from underneath her. And then my eldest daughter came down from the second step and this is all over a period of about 10 years right and right. there is a story about the staircase and what's that then? uh a lady who used to be the housekeeper here right her name was annie and uh when we first got the pub there was one or two people who were a bit worried about walking around the passageway at the bottom of the stairs so a local a local lady uh values uh, used to come in to pick a husband up on a Sunday. So I knew she was a bit of a medium. So I said, uh, Val, will you come to the bottom of the stairs and have a uh, have a look? She, she, she said, uh, what do you mean? I said, well, people are a bit uncomfortable about being in this passageway. Right. So as we walked through the door and she says, well, there she is. And she points to the bottom of the stairs. I said, well, where? I can't see anything. She says, she went, and as they do, they, she went like this. She said, uh, they call her Annie. She's a she's the housekeeper from here and she died at the back end of the 1800s and wow. she tripped on her apron and came down from the second step up and had a she had a sort of a what a medium's discussion with this Annie and Annie said I'm very happy with what's happening here it's a nice environment everything's great however I wish I was still here right, uh, right. well she is yeah well, she <laughs> is uh, about five years later I had a Christmas function on and there was a lady uh, bought a table one of the Christmas parties, mm. a lady from Cowden, a Mrs. Corner, who was well into her 90s when she came in here. And uh, af after the uh, meal, I walked around to check everything was okay. She said, uh, I'm delighted I'm in here. She says, I was actually born in here. I said, really? What? She says, yeah. My mum had me out of wedlock, and she said uh, this was a place where they would put families like that in. Yeah. So I says, well, Mrs. Corner, is anything you can remember about the place? She said, I'm what I can remember vividly is a lady who used to look after my mum and she said she was a lovely person. I said, do you know her name? She said, well, they called her Annie. So oh. that was a lady came here oh. after the thing who knew who this lady was. So it backs up exactly what the yeah. medium says because That's quite often right. you get yeah. something that, that has <coughs> either no hold on history. It's right. usually history you can, you can get a grasp. Yeah. Um, that's great. That's yeah. a, that's really yeah. a positive. That's been the most positive yeah. connection we've ever had with anything in here. Right over the years. Right. Well, I've got the name of the. Uh, I think it was Scott was the the name of the lady who lived here, right. and she had been a, like a part time bar person, right. and then she became like cook and chief bottle washer because essentially she was working for her keep. Yeah. After the husband died in right. the mine, I've got right. his name as well. Right. Uh, there's a, a story from. World War One, about uh, someone who died. That it was someone coming here for a Sunday lunch, saw a soldier outside, right. and long story short, the and I, I'll I'll get all the names a little bit later on. But what they did was, they came in, had lunch. They saw a soldier sitting outside having a smoke. Didn't think too much of it weren't used to seeing people in full military uniform mm. outside a bar, and the uniform looked kind of peculiar. Um, three weeks later, they were in Tudo at their grandmother's house to see them. When they got there, the grandma had all the old photos out, and they were looking through, and they said, uh, do you want to see a picture of my father? And she showed them a picture of the her father, yeah. 
and he was dressed in an army uniform, Durham Late Infantry. Right. And the uniform looked very similar to the one that she'd seen on this other guy. She says, I saw somebody wearing something. Like he says, Oh, they'll not wear it like that. That's the first word. That's he's just come out for the of the first word. He's just you know how when you, you train you then come out and then you can be sent somewhere. Right. He was in his dress uniform and he just come out. So he was ready to go into the fray and yeah. did. And she said, well, let me have a look at that. Have you got any more pictures of him? She showed her about four or five other photographs. And on one of the photographs was a picture of the soldier that she saw right. outside of here. Right. So do you have his name? She turned over the photograph and all of the names had been written on in pencil by whoever took the photograph. Right. The name of that soldier and her Grand, great grandfather, are both buried in the church cemetery here. Right. They both died in the First World War. Right. Right. So they saw somebody that they swear mm -hmm. was that figure. Mm -hmm. And when they came back out, it wasn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they both said, that's him. He says, the husband kind of went, it can it be? Look there. And it was the guy they saw. So there's a few mysteries to, ha to perhaps unfold yeah. so thank you very much michael first of all for letting us come around we appreciate it we're gonna are we running now i think we are kenny there you go so right we're up we're running we're ready we're going to take a look at all of these can you knock the main lights off here as well if you can michael thank you and we'll start setting a trap too and start taking a look around um Michael, do you want to do with the camera? Do you want to just take us, take Tony around Absolutely. while Kenny and I do our you little need thing? To stay, you need to stay with us for the night. Okay, that's fine. Kenny, do you want to stick Sucky on the bar or, oh. or wherever, and we'll uh, there's a few other bits and pieces to put out. Now, this you mentioned is the extension, essentially this this area here. That's a new extension, yes. And you haven't had much here. Nothing. Do other thing. We had a couple of mediums look through the window and ask questions if the car park had ever been a cemetery, because uh, this medium said they could see two graves, two child's graves in the car park. Right. Yes, it was a cemetery. Back in the day, what they did in this particular area, the road between Tudo and where the pub is right now, yeah. uh, this whole area, the, the path down from Tudor, and this is weird because this doesn't happen very often, but they called the lane Rotten Row. And they, originally it was called Rotten Row because all of the people from Tudor, for some weird reason of council rules and regulations, couldn't bury anybody in Tudor. So what they did was they walked them down. They created a procession, either using a cart or sometimes even on people's shoulders for all of the old... We're talking 1700s here. Um, they would walk them down Rotten Row. In other words, the, the bodies were going to rot in the ground down the hill here in this particular area. And it said that... An awful lot of the roads and the grass areas that are in this particular area for about 100 yards in all directions have bodies that were buried here. It was, uh, they couldn't, if they couldn't get them in the churchyard, and quite often that was, if they had the money, they could find their way into the churchyard, but not everybody could back then. Yeah. Uh, so remember that church wasn't built till the late 1800s, but they had, they had an abbey there. Uh, if you couldn't get to the small abbey, they were buried here. And because of that, there's a story from an almanac in 1811 that said the people who lived in the houses in Croxdale said they were experiencing seeing things and hearing things and cries and wails and moans. And it said that is because a lot of these properties will have been built on the bodies of the long dead. Now, that in itself is a Hollywood film just, just waiting to be made. But it would not surprise me at all. Now, surely when they were digging the foundations, you'd think they would have come across 
anything like that you would think it. I can expand on that because when St Mary's Orphanage was in Tudor Village, right. it was run by nuns, yep. a lot of the kids from down in Croxdale and Tudor yep. went to school with the, they call them the homeboys, right. uh, who we've had based here for about 10 years. Right. You know, they're all now in the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. but they used to be in the uh, St Mary's Orphanage uh, during right. the 60s. And they said that they'd actually walk up the chair lane, which runs out the back That's of it. here, yeah, yeah. and jumped into the dike sides. And when we were one of them, actually picked up a child's skull from, from the dike well, there you side. Go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. So it, it all kind of fits. Yeah. But it, it's interesting because Rotten Row became Ratten Row, and it's thought that it was changed just because nobody burying their mother, their father, their son, their daughter wanted to think of them rotting but that's essentially where it originally came from yeah. so chair lane was rotten row yeah. and they would walk down there and then bury them in the fields and the hillsides under trees yeah. so we've no idea how many because if you think about it it was years and years and years they did it and then they changed the the council rulings and all of a sudden they had their own graveyard and they didn't have to do that but everybody in Tudo, it was said everybody came out to walk the procession down rotten row yeah. and uh, to think of that, that's grand. Mm. I mean, for a small village, everybody comes out to show their respect, which I think is a lovely thing. We've got other places here to take a look at. We know we've got a kitchen. Can you take us to the rooms? There's a couple of rooms that have yeah. got, they've got a bit of a story to them too. We know the kitchen's through there and we can get to that along here as well. <coughs> we'll take a look at these rooms and then we'll splinter off and start. The hunt for proper. And if you guys are looking for a place to stay, the bedrooms here are lovely. Right, here we go. Right. Come on up, Tony. Hopefully the Wi-Fi will last here. Will yeah, it? well, we'll, yeah. it'll have to. Right, here we go. Um, what's happened here? We've had a couple of portals done in this room. Oh, right. You're going to have to use the mic. Okay, sorry. We've had a couple of portals set up with the... Uh, investigators right. and a couple of people have come through one was a guy who was on the run from prison right uh, who wouldn't name himself however he he had indicated that he was a, a bad person very aggressive right. when he was talking through the portals uh, and also the room next door uh, room two let's do it was the room which if you want to go through yes yeah, do it because this one you said is probably the most active of the lot. It is, yes. Yeah. Room two, keys in the door. Now this room here featured with the person who owned the premises prior to us. Right. Uh, a Mr. Robinson, who actually had a heart attack in this room. Wow. And his wife was cleaning the prem cleaning round the other rooms, and he went looking for her. Uh, very, very anxious, very concerned. That he, you know, he needed some help. Yeah. Actually, got into room one had a fall in there, came out, went down the stairs and passed away on top of the stairs. Uh, John has featured in a lot of investigations in this room, come through uh, quite aggressive at, at times about different things that are happening, right. have happened, and other people who were already in here. Right. Uh, a lot of aggression between this room and in the that person room. who I've just mentioned in sure. room one, sure. the ex jailbird or whoever or it was. whatever he was, no for sure. You know, I think it's fascinating how one place or one space in time can first of all have the kind of history that this place has and secondly the variety because if you think about it this whole area first of all was Roman, then it was Viking, then it was Norman, I mean then the, it affected in the Civil War, then there was the battle with the Scots that was all over this area. Mm. It's incredible. I mean, if you're looking for a place that's been busy mm. all of the time, mm. it's here. When the investigations are being done, they've tried to pick up different people that have passed through. We have had a Roman chap right. uh, come through on one investigation. Uh, very young person, very worried, trying to get back home, a long way back to Italy, but 
Right, uh, sure. At the bar, he, he came through on quite a few occasions. Yeah. Uh, and as a nice person. Uh, was he an Italian Roman? Because an awful lot of people in the Roman army were picked up from all the other countries because they I, had to put their sons in. You I see. think he was born on the way through. All oh, right, and, right. And right. he grew up in the, the north. Right. Uh, albeit a very short period of time, but he was extremely young. Right. I think that's why he wanted right. to. To get away to when own. what the Romans did in all the in all the countries that they went through, which is how the uh, Roman Empire expanded as, as much as it did, instead of just in many cases they did use an iron fist, but most cases they would come up and they'd say, "Look, we look after you. Just let us rule the place. Uh, we'll run it. We'll give you money while we're here. We'll pay for it. Uh, the only thing you have to do is make sure that uh, at the end of the year." When your son reaches a certain age, they go into the Roman army. Yeah. And then when they're in the Roman army, that country can't fight against the Romans because their children are in the army. It's clever, you know. They're it's, all connected. It's clever, but fascinating. Yeah. So thank you for that. So this is the playboard for tonight. Michael, thanks again. We'll go down and we'll start in the, in the main bar because you've had some stuff there, haven't you? That's correct, yes. Uh, one or two people who have been mediums in the past have actually experienced... Uh, Seen people, I've seen shadow silhouettes Yes. in that area. Well, that's usually what you see out the side of your eye, like when you were standing next to you, <coughs> that you, yeah. that you said. Uh... We'll go back into this room. There's something I want to tell you about this room. Okay. Uh, my brother had a, a 60th birthday party here. Right. And I said, how many people are you going? Oh, 150. I said, Whoa. 150? <laughs> the room only holds 100. He right. said, look, we'll concentrate on this room. But he had he had entertainment on there. Right. So what he did, he got a, a chap who provides high quality uh, infrared cameras and CCTV. Right. And he set a camera up on the far wall there. Right. Transmitted to this TV up a height here. All right. Yeah. With a an, a magic eye behind. Right. So the night was an absolute success. Everybody sitting in here could see everything that was going on in there. That's just gone off. The ball's just gone off. Did you see that, Tony? No. The ball's just gone off. Literally, while you were talking, I didn't want to interrupt you. So anyway, the so night was a great success. Fabulous success. So early hours of the morning when I got finished off, I came back through, knocked all my lights off. Sorry. Sorry. And, and got through into here. And I realised I hadn't turned the TV off. Right. And I looked at the TV and I mean, now I'm tingling. I'm absolutely tingling all over. The activity that was in here, orbs and silhouettes and... Uh, honestly, I am, I'm shaking now. Thinking, wow. So absolutely terrified. So uh, this is a, maybe is this go grab something. Let's get him in here. Yeah. Get well, him in here. Well, this this was basic. I, I got to here and I, I spun. I looked round and I honestly. The I, weird thing is, you quite often you see more in reflection. Yeah. Uh, but because, the quality of the cameras that they, they were, were really good. Thousands. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, did yeah. a big favour for me, brother. But the quality was just incredible. And we have a we experience orbs and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. the uh, Done the investigations with nothing like that's on that TV. Brilliant. It was like, it was like a, a thousand shoes. Star stars. Wars. Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah, right. Well, Tony, I can give you the microphone back. There's Sucky. Oh, you've set them up, have you? You started them off. Yeah. Well, oh, that's great. Okay. So, um, let's get the necromancer as well. We might as well start in the room where the vast majority of Right. The big mirror. Right. Right, let's see what we get. Come on then. Hello, is there anyone with us right now? Talk to us, please. Give, give me a name. Gene Scott. Gene Scott. Is Gene Scott there? Gene Scott was the name of the lady. Just a second. 
Let me explain quickly what who Jean Scott is. Jean Scott was a lady who worked here behind the bar many years ago. Her husband was called Robert Scott. He worked at the colliery here, Croxdale Colliery. He was a... I was getting noise. Could that have... Did you hear that? Did you hear that? From above? Yeah, from above. Like a... Like a floorboard he came. It's still there. Footsteps. There. You got it now, Michael? Oh, you definitely want to hear. No, th there's footsteps. I heard that. You heard that. I heard a little bang. Yeah, yeah. There was, there was a, like a creak, like a floorboard, and then footsteps. Small footsteps, child or woman. The, um, this Robert Scott, though, was called a shot man or a stone man. And what his job was, was to widen seams so that more people could get in. In this particular case, 1876, he wanted to blow a seam higher so they could get a horse in to move the heavy buckets of, of coal. Now, he set the shot, went, left it. There was kind of a fizzle kind of noise. And he presumed that the shot hadn't gone off. Maybe it had gone out because you had to light them. It was, it was like lighting a piece of, of dynamite. He went back down that particular seam. His mates were waiting for him. He didn't come back. And it seems that when he got back to that seam, the ex... <laughs> that could be my wife's noise. All right, okay. The, um, the, sh the shot fired, it's directly above Tony now, um, the shot fired and when they found him, they came back and all they could find was a hand sticking out through rubble. When they pulled all the rocks away, he was in two pieces. Now, they brought him back to the family home. I mean, not even go to a hospital, because he was obviously dead. They brought him back to the family home. Within three days of his burial, she was given papers to leave the colliery house. <laughs> and the pub landlord here, just shows you that, you know, the, the family feel of this place was as such, even then, because she'd been working behind the bar, they gave her a home here, and she stayed here till she died. Now, she was in her 40s then, so 10, 15, 20, 30 years, because a lot of people didn't well, live. That's to similar lines to when the premises were built as a, a community hostel for the, the stone quarry yes. and the coal mine. Uh -huh. The stone quarry were the owners of the premises. Yeah, yeah. And then when it was sold to the northeastern breweries in the back end of the 1800s, who were then gobbled up by Vaux's yeah. brewery, who had it for 80 odd years. Yeah. Uh, that connects the story of it being a, a facility for families and, and- Just, you see, everything that we hear just seems to fit yeah. the actual history, which makes it real. Yeah. To me, makes it absolutely real. Anyway, let's see if we can get any, any of Jean or any of, of any, anybody coming yeah, yeah. through. Give me a name. Give me a name. Looking for Jean. 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 Is there anyone here? You mentioned a John upstairs. Is there a John? Kelly. I said John and it said Kelly. John Kelly. Is that the name? Aye. John Kelly. Was that Margaret? I thought that... I'm, just give me a name. Is it John Kelly? Can you... Can, John. John Kelly. Let, John. That's three Johns. Aye, <coughs> right, Kelly. You, men you mentioned a woman's name. Give me the woman.
John Kelly. John Kelly. We got. We keep getting John. I just want to talk to John. Just John. Just John. No, there's somebody blocking. There's somebody that wants to play, but. Let me just talk to John, please. Okay, John. Do you have a message for anyone, John? We're going to use the rods here. This is a place for the rods. So we've had a John and we've had a Margaret. Is the name Kelly? The important thing is, is the name Kelly? Look, 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 look. That means the spirit here, because that, that's the side. So what's your name? We mentioned John Kelly, and when I said Kelly, that, that lit. Is the name also Margaret then? Who is the who is the mess? Did you hear that? That was me. Oh, that was you. Is Margaret in spirit? Because it was a man's voice, and the man, because if a woman's voice had said Margaret, you would have said she may be in spirit, but when a man says it, it's usually because he wants a message to them. Can you confirm again, John Kelly? It just said Kelly, John Kelly. John Kelly. Was the message was the message for Margaret? Oh, 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 oh. That's the other side. John, tell me what happened to you, John. If you're wondering what that is in the corner, that strange creation our boffin created it and it picks up signal on three levels if the light on the right hand side goes off it means the spirit in this area if the light on the left hand side of it goes off it means there's something very very you've got to be within within a, like two three feet of of the actual figure itself Aye. so come on If your name is John, who else is there? Give me other names. Let me know. Who else do you have a message for? Who else? Who else is the message for? How did you die, John? How did you die, John? Tell me. How did you die, John? I need to know how you died, John. How did you die, John? Don't mess around. Talk to me. We got instant responses at the very beginning. It's, 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 it's eased away, almost like they've lost interest. When mediums have come into this room, they pick them up, the chap stood at the bar, behind the bar, directly behind that character. Well, let's, let's, let's go. I'll do that. Yeah, let's see. 
Right. Okay. Right, I'm here. I shall just there's, there's bins and stuff. Oh, lights go. Oh, was that you, Tony? Um, yeah, yeah. Let me just put this down. Right. Right. How did you die? How did you die? Stroke. Did you hear that? Was it a stroke? Stroke? I thought I said he said stroke. You died of a stroke. When was this? Was it? But I'm, we're getting John Kelly. We're getting John Kelly, man. John Kelly's a chap that used to feature in our for 20 odd years. Give over. Is he alive? No, he died. How did he die? Hang on. 10 years ago. That's just what they've said. 10 years, John. He was healed. John Kelly was. John Kelly ran our folk group here from. 1997 to about 2013, 14. And how did he die? Sorry? How did he die? Uh, That's just what we've said. So this is... We've got John Kelly. I'm surprised John comes through. Was he married? Yeah, to Margaret. Shut up! <laughs> what? Absolutely, yeah. Had you ever met? Did you mention that to me at all? No, not at all. No. Did you mention John Kelly no, at all? Not at all. John Robinson. Upstairs. John Robinson, you John said upstairs. Robinson, yeah. Margaret Kelly, yeah. That's ridiculous. Let's see if we can get some more then. That is just. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm shaking here. This is not on mic, by the way. You need to. Do you realise, though? Do you realise the gravity of that? What yeah, we've just done. I wouldn't have heard what he said. Sorry. You know, see again. So, um, just to, he's, Michael's just been explaining to me. When we were upstairs, you will have heard Michael talking to us about a man called John Robinson who used to own the place. That's correct. Yep. And he had a heart attack upstairs in the room. Yep. I come down. We get. A Mike, we get a John, we get a Kelly, and we get a man's voice saying Margaret. And now you tell me that for how many years was he here? 16, 17 years. 16, 17 years. Ran, ran he didn't work here, but no, he, he, he just ran, ran the club. He ran the, the club, the folk club, yeah. yeah. And we said, we heard him say stroke, yeah. and he died of a heart attack. That's correct, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And his wife was called Margaret. And his wife was called Margaret. Yeah. Gee, guys, well, let's see if we can get some more proof. Of, of him. I mean, things that, that none of us could possibly know. Yeah. Right. Cheapers. No, we were looking for like history. history. I, I was expecting <laughs> like 100 years ago yeah. or, or so. And even the people, some of the stories, because, and I know we've had that. Did you have that voice there? Just behind me, yeah. Tony, that wasn't you there, was it? No, I'm not moved. I just got a hint of a voice over here. Just a whisper, though? It was male, though. Oh, yeah. yeah but it was yeah. a whisper. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Have you got there? Sometimes it's just best to... It was just there. And after we identified it, I heard... And I I'm hoping it wasn't the floorboard, but it was kind of just like a, not a whistle, but a you know that kind of just it's unusual. Can I just say something about this area here? Uh -huh. Directly below is the cellar. Where right. The building's blocked off, filled up to that high. Right, with a stone from the building. Stone from did the building. Did that? Did the, those rooms that are now blocked were the corridors out of the place? Or, no. Uh, no. 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 
they were just storage, just storage. Part of the cellar as such. Right. However, over the there's only three people been into that room. Right. One was a guy from Esoteric Investigations. Right. Yourself and the guy from Bridvik when they put the force mix system in when 1995. Yeah, yeah. So you had to put a harness through. And in the room, in that far corner, there's a pale blue rocking chair. Uh huh. Right. So. Twice that I've looked into the room, the rocking chair has been up against the wall and directly in the room, which would be possibly about about here. Right. <coughs> we had a, a medium night with a chap called Sean Robeck about 15 years ago. Uh -huh. And we had four ladies in here who were doing tar tarot cards, crystal balls. Yeah, yeah. And this lady here was... I heard that knock. I heard that knock. Did you hear the knock? Just yet. Right. So the lady who was here had a hell of a presentation. The other three disappeared as Sean did at the end of the night. So this lady was here and she was lovely. She was, you know, how long have you been here? Early in the evening, my daughter had been in with my granddaughter who was about 18 months old. Right. At the time. Uh -huh. So this girl says, How old's the little girl? I said, I don't know, she's about 18 months now. Oh no, she's older than that. I said, you mean my granddaughter? She said, no, the little girl has just run through here. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, how long have you been able to do this? And she told me this story, how she first experienced seeing people who had passed over. Uh -huh. So she said, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah. She said, why are they fighting over the chair? I said, what? I said, well, what chair? And I was looking around. And she, she stood here and she went. And she's the one down. She had no, no clue. Nobody Nobody yeah, 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 Nobody yeah. at all. Yeah. Me, my wife, and so, I mean, a so that, that that was a girl's thing. She pointed below. Downstairs. That's <laughs> well we're gonna we're gonna be going down to the cellar. I'm mind blown about John Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Who wanted to get a I message? Know, John was such a, a standoffish, quiet, reserved right. person. I can't understand right. how, he, how he's made himself known. He was the quietest man God ever made. But how how would how would Me. But there's no, the, the bottom line is, there's absolutely no way we could know anything about no, John Kelly. No, absolutely not, no. And I, we, no, we haven't discussed that. Well, you wouldn't. No, 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 not at all. Right. You don't know what to do. <laughs> no, it's just, I'm definitely going to use the rods right. at some point. Yeah. He just he, he maybe he's had a ball here. I think he obviously had a ball here. So, or maybe he's, he's just old, passing he's by. Most quiet, unassuming man ever. Honestly, he's always he was one of our favourite people because he was so reliable and so conscious, and he ran the folk club incredibly well. He was poorly for a while, different things. But yeah, yeah, yeah. When he eventually he went straight away, he was a retired wagon driver, big unionist. Right. Uh, he used to hold his union meet and say, "What a lovely, lovely chap." But very quiet and unassuming. Right. Nobody here would be very sort of upfront. You know. Right. No. Go on, Gian. Oh, we're just talking about him being unassuming. He's. Yeah. That's very strange. But whoever comes through behind the bar, everybody picks up on that. Right. Whoever, whoever stood behind the bar is. Right. Um, you think it's John Robinson, would he? Sure, sure, sure. The property that he'd gone, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But nothing's ever come through like that. It's bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. I'm just going to get me paperwork again and... See what you get behind the bar, Kenny. I'm going to try a spirit box. Spirit. Box. That's off.
Oh, you've got luck, yeah. So haphazard that damn thing. Couple of little figures there. Looks like someone sitting on the bar. Okay. <laughs> Definitely there, isn't it? Yeah. That's strange, isn't it? You can get that between two, two figures. Yeah. You getting anything, guys? Yeah, two figures behind the ball. What? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, clear. Excuse me. Clear. Oh, that's wild. That's similar to what that's it, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah the left hand one was mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And also two degrees colder there than there. Which is random. Now that doesn't make any sense either. Because the temperature in this room should be exactly the same. This whole place is, this place is between two and three degrees cooler than everywhere else. And Maybe single story extension. Do yeah. you think? Yeah. You know, how, how about spread on the factory? I think they're meant to be there. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a dog style. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's as cool down there as it is behind the bar. That's not the extension. It's four degrees colder. Look. Mm -hmm. 23, 24 here. In there. Yeah. Damn me, 17, 16. That's eight degrees. And this should be the warm place. This should yeah, be the warm absolutely. place. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's, That's a sign that there's something about. Yeah. That's, I, I had a feeling. And that's just, Ooh. we've only done one room. Yeah. One more quick story, because I know we always, a lot of people like to know how the places get their name. Crocsdale. Now, interesting because I discovered that King Canute came here in the 1050s. King Canute, C N U T. He was our king at the time, it was just before the Norman Conquest. And he came here and he gave the land here about to a Viking whose name was Croker. And this whole village was known as. Croker's land, but because the river was shaped at the time they thought like a bull's tail, this place became known as Croker's Tail. Croker's Tail became Croxdale. So, I mean, just the fact that Vikings were here doing their thing, I think, is 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 stunning. I can't believe. Have we ever had a bigger disparity Never. in temperatures? Never. No, I don't think so. Eight degrees. Eight degrees difference. That's like impossible. Absolutely impossible.
No, absolutely. We've never had an eight degree disparity in the same area. A degree, one and a half, eight. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're red hot, are they? This is the red hot. Well, this is normally the warm area, and as you go, you go to the extension, being in, of course. Yeah. But this area here, yeah. eight degrees, yeah. eight degrees. That's that's you know that's not that's not chump cheese. So we've covered Rotten Row. We've covered Gene Scott, who worked here. We've had John Kelly with a message to his his wife. You said Margaret. I'd love to see if we could get some more. I, I don't know whether just to plod on, yeah. dig the Kelly for or do we go and look elsewhere? Go elsewhere and come back to Yeah, yeah. Really? Oh, my goodness. Hey, look, we've barely scratched the surface here. We're going to hit, Kenny and I are going to hit the cellar while Tony does a sweep of up here because you'll be able to hear everything that we do. You'll be able to see it on Kenny's camera. That's what's going to happen now. Kenny, you and me, let's, let's hit it down there and uh, see what we get. I don't know whether to do it. Well, necromance, just in case. Just in case. Right. So if I could just say... Hang on a second. I'm being dragged back here a little bit. Right. Can I, I don't know. I, I feel, I just feel like I've been brought back in here. Back in here. Okay. Um, can we talk to you later, John? John, if you're here, make any kind of noise. Give us any kind of sign. Can, can we talk to you later? Will you talk to us later? There he is. Where? Well, he it just went off. The light. I didn't see it. Just literally went off briefly. Right. Okay. <sighs> John, give me any kind of message, any kind of sign. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. So, will I be able to talk to you later? Make any kind of noise, make any kind of sign. Will we be able to talk to you later? There. I did Damn, I didn't that. see it. I saw it there. Well, I had a camera. Which on one it, was so it, left or right? The left. Right, okay. John, please stay with us. Come with us, in fact. Let's go down. I'm tempted to take Chucky. Do we take Chucky? No, leave Chucky where he is. John, we'll leave him there. I don't think there'll be Wi-Fi in the cellar. Did he change his name? Chucky? Uh, Sucky, sorry. <laughs> Chucky, yeah. You know where I got because that's no, that that's that little know. that little critter in the film. About this Annie. Yeah, yeah. This was the area that she died here, but she passes through this the corridor. corridor because she was a one room to another. She was a like a chambermaid. She, she was the housekeeper. Housekeeper. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Right. Well, let's get downstairs, see what we get. I don't think there'll be Wi-Fi down there. No, I don't either. But I'm gonna stay camera. at the top. Okay. You've got your cap. Yeah, get my camera. Kenny, off you go, mate. Ow. Yeah. Down here. Yeah, just, just catch me fingers in the door. Why don't you? I'll, I'll put this on again. <laughs> no worries. I'll stay at the top. Okay, mate. 